Welcome back to DIY My Way. Notice anything different about my tractor? Go ahead, take a look. Anything at all? Any changes I may have made? For quite a while now, I've wanted a chainsaw scabbard on my tractor so that, say, if I'm out brush hogging and I come across a tree that's down in the path, I have an easy way to cut it up and then push it out of the way with my front end loader. But I also needed to, on occasion, carry other tools like, say, a shovel and a rake. Say I am grading out my driveway or something and I've got the box blade on the back and, of course, I've got my fell on the front. Uh, but I almost always need a shovel and a rake to do some fine finessing, particularly with the driveway work. And I, if I carry them in the bucket, inevitably I end up dumping them out or burying them or damaging them. So I needed some place to carry at least a couple of tools along with the chainsaw. So let me show you the solution I came up with. I chose to mount the scabbard and tool holder on the loader side frame. However, I could have mounted it on the loader mainframe as well. Since I always have the loader on the tractor except for maintenance, I went with the side frame. I'll share all the measurements as I go, but bear in mind that these only apply to the Kubota LA525 loader on a standard L-series tractor, that is a 2501, 3301, or 3901. Of course, the dimensions will vary from tractor and loader makes and models, but I'll show you how I come up with the optimal dimensions for my tractor and how you can use the same techniques on yours. Also keep in mind that the materials I used were based on what I had on hand and aren't carved in stone. I begin by drawing a level line on the lower section 5 inches from the bottom of the side frame. This is where the top of the first mounting bar will be welded. A paint stirring stick, clamps, and a magnetic level make this easy. Next, I use a knife edge file to make some grooves in the side frame at both ends of the line I made. I did this because the lines will probably be gone when I remove the paint from the areas to be welded, but the line will be useful for alignment purposes until then. Then I measure 12 inches up from the bottom line and make a mark for the top line. I clamp the paint stick below the mark and make sure the line is level before drawing the line. Again, I file grooves in each end of the line. I clamp a straight piece of 2x4 to the loader mainframe as reference for where the ends of the mounting bars will come to with respect to the edges of the side frame. So the end of the bottom mounting bar will be 2 and 3 quarters inches from the side frame and the top of the mounting bar will be 1 and 1 8 inches from the side frame. Next, I cut two pieces of 3 16 inch thick by 2 inches wide flat bar, 11 inches long. Then I smooth the rough edges off with an angle grinder. After drilling two 5 16 inch holes 5 8 inches from the end of each mounting bar, I remove the mill scale with an angle grinder and wire brush wheel. Notice that I have marked where the edges of the side frame will be on each mounting bar and I also filed grooves in the top edge of the mounting bars where they'll meet the sides of the frame edges. The video where I did this is missing in action. Now I'll weld one and a quarter inch long 5 16 inch bolts into each hole. By the way, I ground the zinc plating off the three sides of the bolt head that I'm welding. I put a nut on to hold the bolt in place until I'm done welding. That's one.
That's two. And that's three. I remove the loader for easier access to the work area and I grind the paint away from the areas to be welded. Then I clamp the mounting bars in place and start welding. I certainly don't need a continuous bead. These few spots will be more than enough to hold the weight of my chainsaw and a few tools. Before I weld the bottom mounting bar, I check the measurements and check for square. A little welding on the back sides of each mounting bar for good measure. After that I clean it all up first with some grinding, then wipe with mineral spirits, and mask it off. To put a coat of primer on the mounting bars. I'll top coat it later, but now it's time to build the removable scabbard and tool carrier. Which I'm going to make out of a set of bed rails we had in storage. They are essentially one and a half by one and a half inch angle iron, one eighth inch thick. Perfect for this project. First I have to cut the claw hook end off. These first two pieces will be the vertical supports 22 inches long. I filed the end smooth. Then I drilled two 3 8 inch holes, one 4 inches from the bottom of the upright and one 16 inches up from the bottom. I did the same thing for the other upright, only on the opposite angle side. Next I cut two horizontal supports 16 inches long. Here are those hole measurements again. One four inches from the bottom of the uprights and one sixteen inches from the bottom. Here's the upper support clamped in place. Notice I have ground the edges with a bevel for the weld bead to lift. I weld the horizontal supports to the vertical supports. Then take the frame to the bench to finish the weld.
and clean and grind them smooth. Next I put the frame back on the loader and experiment with where to position the scabbard. Since I have a chain box mounted to the side frame of the loader, I can't mount the scabbard there, so I have to mount mine to the inside of the loader tower. My scabbard is 16 inches long, but there's room for scabbards as long as 24 inches to the floor of the deck. I want to position it so that it doesn't get in the way of getting on and off the tractor. That should do nicely. Now I prep the areas on the frame where the scabbard supports will go. And cut a couple of notches where the lower scabbard supports will be. Then grind the area of the welds. The two scabbard supports are six and a half inch pieces of bed rail with the corners clipped at 45 degrees so as not to be a hazard when I'm getting on and off the tractor. They are set 12 inches apart. After welding the supports on, I test fit the frame and scabbard supports. That looks like it will work very well. Next I make the clamp plates that will hold the scabbard in place. This top one is a piece of bed rail and is six and a half inches long. It is held to the frame with a number 10 by 24 machine screw and lock washer. The distance between the scabbard supports and the clamp face is determined by your scabbard thickness, plus a bit more for the rubber pads that will be glued on later. Oh, and the piece is notched one and a half inches to create a mounting tab for the screw. Also, a quarter inch by 20 threaded hole is drilled 3 8 inch from the end of the clamp plate to hold the one quarter inch screw that puts the squeeze on the scabbard. You'll see this in better detail shortly. The bottom clamp plate is made from a piece of 1 8 inch flat bar 1 inches wide. It is 6 and a quarter inches long. Two 1 quarter by 20 inch threaded holes are drilled 1 half inch from the end of the clamp plate to hold the 1 quarter inch clamp screws. By the way, I had to make a notch in the rear vertical support to clear the loader retaining pin bushing. It is two and a half inches long by one inch deep and 10 and one half inches from the bottom of the vertical support. And here's a look at the 5 16 holes drilled for the clamp screws to go through. This one is centered in the support at three quarters of an inch from the edge. These two are one half inches from the ends of the scabbard supports. Notice that I've primed the areas of the welds to be ready for a top coat of Kubota orange paint. Speaking of which, here are the pieces after painting. After getting the thing painted and fitting it on here one more time, I thought of one thing that might actually create a problem. And that is, what if I'm on a hill that raises this tire up all the way? Do I have clearance with the tire there? And guess what? It looks like I don't. I'm about to find out, see if I can turn this. You can see if, uh, if this wheel is, if this axle is cranked all the way up and I turn the wheel, it's going to bind. So uh, that's why it's so important to think through everything that could uh, possibly uh, happen. So I'm going to have to come in here and cut this off so that my maximum length forward can be 
uh, no for I'll just bring it back to that weld there to for safety and then repaint that end of it. With that problem solved, it's time to glue the rubber gripping pads on the clamp plates. Some scraps of pond liner will be perfect. A little bit of Gorilla Glue goes a long way. I can use the piece I cut off the frame to press it down. And then clamp it to the welding table to cure. I do the same thing to the frame scabbard supports, only this time I wrap the holding pieces in plastic so the excess glue doesn't stick to them. With the frame back on the tractor, we see the problem with the tire has been solved. So now it's time for a dry run. I tighten the one quarter inch nylock nuts on the clamp plate screws to draw them snug, but not too tight. That looks like it'll work just fine. And it doesn't get in the way when I get on and off the tractor. Great. Next, I got two sections of PVC pipe 28 inches long. Then I drill and tap one quarter inch by 20 threaded holes three inches apart with the first set of holes five inches from the vertical support. Also, these holes are 20 and three quarters inches apart from top to bottom. Note that I glued end caps on the tool tubes and drilled three eighths inch drain holes in each. Then I drilled two pilot holes 20 and 3 quarters inches apart, starting 5 inches from the top of each tube, followed by 7 8 inch holes to allow for a socket to pass through. Then I drill 5 16 inch holes through the opposite side of the tubes. I attach the tubes with one inch long, quarter inch bolts and lock washers. Again, just using what I had handy. Half inch long, quarter inch screws would have been fine as well. It's time to mount the finished product. I use stainless steel 5 16 inch nylock nuts to secure it to the mounting bars. The bottom line is if you build something similar, keep in mind the space you have available and maintain safe clearances from any moving parts like your wheels or loader arms. So there you have it. My solution to adding a chainsaw scabbard to my tractor where it doesn't get in the way and a couple of tool carrying pods for the random tool that I might need out in the field. If you enjoy my videos, please take time to give it a like, leave a comment, and by all means, please subscribe. And if you want to know when I post another video, click that little bell. And as always, thank you for watching.